Assalamu alaikum class how are you all <coughs> This is Ms Ruz Iman Raza your mathematics teacher as you all know that Today we are starting our new syllabus our book that is primary mathematics book 3 the first chapter which i introduce today is chapter number 1 number up to 10 thousand okay class in this chapter the content which we are discussing are counting to 10000 place value difference between place value and face value comparing and ordering numbers number patterns first of all for counting to 10000 you need to learn inwards counting you have to know the counting in words like o n 1 t w o 2 and all that because it help us or you to understand the topic deeply counting number is also different like locally and internationally in the next slide i will give you the further description about counting to 10000 okay class counting to 10000 in the previous class like in grade 3 till grade grade till grade 2 you are learning till hundreds there is a number and it have so many digits we are starting from right to left in mathematics we are starting from right to left in counting like if we want to count a number we have to start it from right to left there is a number that is 1489 so we are saying this number like 1489 but when we are giving it the place value or the counting number we are starting from the right to left means from 9 to 8 to 4 to 1 there are two types of number system one is international number system and the second is local number system if you are pakistani so we are saying this number is pakistani number system if we are indian if we are australia if we belongs to australia all have its local numbers as well because their language and their communication are also different but international number system is recognized in whole the world so we are preferring to understand the international number system if i am if i am writing a number a number includes many digits as you all know if i am writing a number that is 1489 it have its own name like there are so many students in the class but every student have its own name and identity and a place in a class some students are so intelligent some are average some are slow learners some are tall some are short they are categorized like that in the place value there are many digits by the combination of digits we got a number for example if we have a phone number there are many digits in it and by the combination of digits different digits we are getting a thing that is called number okay there is a number 1489 now we have to describe it by the help of international number system or place value 
so we are starting from right to left it is a basic rule of mathematics that we are starting from right to left 9 is the ones 8 is the tens 4 is the hundred and 1 is the thousand in 9 in ones there is only one digit in tens there are two digits in hundred there should be three digits and in thousand there should be four digits and so on so what we are saying this number is as 1000 489 in the same class okay class now we are after international number system and the thing which we are understanding about digits we are moving towards the next topic that is place value in maths every digit in a number has a place value place value can be defined as the value represented by a digit in a number on the basis of its position in the number okay it should be sound difficult but it's not difficult it's so easy i am giving you example i made four to five rows in a class like you have five rows in a class and every row have four students Okay, so the total students are five multiplied by four. That is five fours are twenty. There are twenty students in a class. I created four rows of five student each. If I want to identify a single student, I should call him or her by her name or his name. Otherwise, I will give him a location. like where he is standing like i say first row third student second row first student i am giving you a place of him or her now so it's called a place value it's a basic example so as i told you before in every number there are many digits and every digit have its own value its own worth its own position because by the help of this value and position you are getting the actual value of the whole number if any one number is missing you can't you can't you can't yeah you can't calculate the number in a proper form you just have to assume or approx the number you can't calculate it actually so for the further discussion if we are breaking the place value term in terms of two words that is place and value so place means is the location of a digit in a number numerical where does a digit live place tells us where is the digit standing and the value of a digit in a numerical how much digit worth first of all place tell us what's the location of the number and then value tells us what's the worth of it understand now in the next picture you are seeing a number that is 1329 if i am saying 1329 it's a number i can't know what is 1 is what is 2 is what is 3 is what is 9 is So place value give the worth to a number and the digit also. In this number, nine is ones, two is tens, three is hundred, and one is thousand. Now, if we combine all of them, so we read it like one thousand three hundred twenty-nine. Hope you understand. now class after understanding the concept of international number system the place value the worth of digit the worth of number we are moving towards a topic that is difference between place value and face value 
the place value of a digit changes according to the place it occupied face value of a digit remains the same at all the places for example there are number that is 85 5 is ones and 8 is tens in the case of 8 8 uh, is the face value and 8 it represented the tens that mean it is 80 so the place value is 80 same as with the 5 face value and place value of 5 both are 5 okay in above definition we are saying that place value can change but the face value can't change face value is like the number 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 should be uh, like uh, if 6 is on the place of ones or tens or seven or five so one or tens or thousand or 10000 or hundreds the value of seven is remain constant that is called face value like we are saying uh, we are seeing the number 5 to we are saying it 5 not 4 if we are writing 3 on the board so we are saying that it's 3 we are not given the answer that it's 2 so it's mean it is a face value but we can put 5 maybe as ones maybe as tens maybe as 100 maybe as 1000 and so on so the place where we put that number is called its place value hope you understand the difference between the face value and the place value okay class the next topic of this chapter is number pattern first of all we are we are understanding the inverse counting then international number system after that we are uh, classify into place value what is the value of a number what is the value of a digit in a number then we are differentiate between the place value and the face value after that we are moving towards the topic that is number pattern look at the number pattern what is the next number in each pattern if i am giving you a pattern so you can judge the further forecast like if it is a weather for example i am giving you a daily life example if there is winter okay and uh, we know that in winters the temperature should be decreases maybe in negative maybe in the lesser value so we forecast it if we have uh, three cold nights so we are considering that like fourth night is also cold if uh, there is a month of july where uh, rain is like dropping out so we are forecasting that how much rain should be there on that day and we also forecast the weather we also forecast average number like if i am getting uh, 65 marks out of 100 in first test and 70 marks in second test and 80 marks in third test and 60 marks in final test so we are taking an average we are making a pattern like it it should be downfall or it should be increasing so number pattern it's easy you should go for the book and uh, also i am giving you the more slides for the, this chapter so i am describing it to you again okay so don't you worry so here is two example for the number system in first example there is a number pattern that is in form of increasing like 177 277 377 477 577 677 777 and the last number is missing we have to find out the number so how we find out it first of all we are seeing that what's the trend is the trend is about increasing not decreasing 
Sometimes it's increasing, sometimes it's decreasing, sometimes it's multiplying, sometimes it's division, sometimes it's addition, sometimes it's subtraction, sometimes it's combination. Like some uh, after each value, thing is subtract, divide, multiply, and whatever. But it's a higher level. Uh, we are in class or grade three, so we are studying the basic level. Okay. In the first example, we are seeing that the number is increasing. There is a increasing pattern or trend of a number. Okay. Now, if we find out 177 to 277 and 377 means increase should be of 100 numbers. So, as this, once and after 177, there is 277. 277 is 377. 377 becomes 477 then 577 then 677 and then 777 so by looking this number system or number pattern we are easily find out that the next number is versa number class can anybody guess it yeah right we are adding 100 more digits and 777 and it should be what? 877. Good job. Now, in the next pattern, we are seeing, first of all, we are seeing what is the number R? 830, 825, 820, 815, 810, 85, 800. Means it's a decreasing trend. Decreasing by 10 digits. Every digit is lesser than the first digit by 5 numbers. First is 830, then 825, then 820, then 815, then 810, then 805 and then 800. So automatically the next number should be in a form of decreasing way with 5 digit. So, what's the answer class is? If we subtract 5 digits from 800, so what's the answer is? Any clue? Any guesses? The answer is 795. Good job. Hope you understand it. In next two slides, I will give you the relevant video about this topic which are so interesting and animated also that's also give you the help to recall or revise the this chapter introduction and also helps to solve your problems We hope you're ready for both fun and adventure because today we are going to learn about place values which are really exciting, really awesome, so strap in, it's going to be a good time. But first we want to hear from you. Six year old Ava had a joke and said, what did the Pacific Ocean say to the Atlantic Ocean? Nothing, it just waved. <laughs> Thank you Ava, that's awesome. Audrey and Jacob from the state of Washington watched our reptile video and said, We enjoyed your video because we own a snake. Thanks for sharing. Wow, that is awesome, Audrey and Jacob. Wow. Seven-year-old Lydia from Ten Mile, Tennessee watched our Golden Gate Bridge video and said, I've always dreamed of seeing the Golden Gate Bridge. This video was very exciting. Thanks for sharing, Lydia. We hope you get to see it someday. And finally, Talon, who's seven years old from Georgia, had a joke and said, What is a car's favorite thing to do? Karate! <laughs> oh, love it. Okay, that was awesome. Be sure and watch this video to the end to learn how you too could be featured on one of our videos. Well, as we mentioned earlier, today we are going to learn about place values. Place values are so awesome because they help you decode numbers so you can find out how much numbers are worth. 
So if you're ready, let's get started with learning about place values. First, we want to teach you a fun word, okay? We're going to teach you a brand new word. Maybe it's brand new to you. Maybe you've heard it before. But yes, you are right now going to learn a new word. That word is digit. Yeah, digit. Can you say that? Yeah, let's say it together. Digit. What a fun word. What does the word digit mean? Is Digit your neighbor's dog that looks really cute but is always in a bad mood? <laughs> hey, Digit, I'm, I'm just trying to pet you. Give you a little bit of a treat if you would be a little bit more nice. <laughs> well, it is a good name for a dog, but that's not what we're talking about when we say Digit. So, what are digits? Digits are the parts of a number. Like, look at the number 920. There are three parts, or digits, in this number. The number 920 has three digits. Remember, digits are the parts of a number. Pretty simple. Let's look at the number 74. There are two parts, or digits, in the number 74. The number 74 has two digits. Remember, digits are the parts of a number. Super simple, super easy. And finally, let's look at the number 6. How many digits are in the number 6? Remember, we're just looking at the parts of the number. How many digits? Yeah, just one digit. There's only one part or digit to this number. It's just six. Great job. Remember, digits are the parts of a number. Okay, so this is awesome. Here is where place values come in. The place value is how much a digit is worth based on where it is. In other words, where a digit is in the number tells us how much it is worth. So what are the place values we're going to be looking at today? What are the different values of the places where the digits will be? Well, the digits will either be in the ones spot, the tens spot, the hundreds spot, or the thousands spot. All right, let's use the place values. Okay, so here are the place values and where they are for the different digits. This first spot is the ones spot. That's where the ones go. This second spot is the tens spot. It's where the tens go. This third spot is the hundred spot. It is where the hundreds go. And finally, here is the thousands spot. It is where the thousands go. Now the place values can go higher than this, but these are the only place values we're going to be learning about today. Alright, so our first example is the number 4,000. The number 4,000. Alright, well I'm going to need your help. Which digit is in the ones spot? You can see it right there. Which digit is in the ones spot? Yeah! Zero! Great job! Alright, how about helping us figure out the tens? Which digit is in the tens spot? Yeah! Zero! Good job! All you have to do is look where the arrow is pointing. The 10 spot is a zero. Alright, how about the 100 spot? Which digit is in the 100s spot? You see? Yeah, the same answer! Zero! Good job! Good job! Okay. And which digit is in the thousands spot? Which digit is in the thousands spot? 
Yeah! Four! Awesome! The number four is in the thousands spot. There are four thousands in the number four thousand. All right, our next example is the number 508. Okay, I'm going to need your help again. Which digit is in the ones spot? You can look at the place values for a clue. You can see the arrow. Which digit is in the one spot? Yeah, eight. Good job. Okay, which digit is in the tens spot? Which digit is in the ten spot? Yeah, zero. Good job. All right, which digit is in the hundreds spot? Can you see that? Which number is in the hundred spot? Yeah, five. Good job. Okay, now this might seem a little tricky. Which digit is in the thousand spot? Which digit is in the thousand spot? Wait a second, there isn't even a digit there. It's only 508. There are no thousands. So the digit would be nothing or zero. Zero and nothing it has the same value. So there's nothing that's in the thousands spot. It's only 508. There are no thousands. You are doing a phenomenal job. Okay, now you're going to be able to give it a try without any help or any clues. And you've learned so much. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. You're going to do awesome. Okay, you're ready. Here's the number. 8,763. 8,763. We're going to name the place values and you let us know which digit is in which one. Okay, which digit is in the one spot? Which digit is in the one spot? The number is 8,763. Which one? Yeah, three. Three is in the one spot. Remember, this is the one spot. Good job. Okay, what's in the 10 spot? Which digit is in the 10 spot? Uh-huh, six. Six is in the 10 spot. Good job. Yeah, you can see right here is where the 10 spot is. Wow, you're getting the hang of it. Okay, which digit is in the 100 spot? Do you know which one? Which digit is in the 100 spot? Seven, way to go. Yes, seven is in the 100 spot. And you can see right here is that 100 spot. Yeah, seven is in the 100 spot. Good job. Okay, here's the last one. Which digit is in the thousand spot? Which digit is in the thousands spot? Eight, yes, good job. Eight is in the thousands spot. And you can see right here is where that thousands spot is just before that comma. Isn't that awesome? Wow, you've learned so much. To review, digits are the parts of a number. The place value is how much a digit is worth based on where it is. These are the place values we learned today, the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. In this example, there are three ones, there are six tens, which is 60, there are seven hundreds, which is 700, and there's eight thousands. So the number read out is 8,763. It 
so nice going for a stroll and just thinking about those place values. Oh, I love the ones and the tens and the hundreds and the thousands. Knowing where a digit is tells us what the value is, which is great. So we hope you learned some cool things, and we hope to see you next time. So, you made it to the end of the video. You are awesome. Remember the kids' comments? We promised you we would share how you too could be featured on one of our videos. With the help of an adult, leave your first name, age, and where you are from along with a comment. You can share a joke, a silly message, or just share how much you love us. If you are watching this as a class, you can leave a comment too. Just share your teacher's name, your grade, and where you are from for a chance to be featured on one of our videos. We hope to hear from you soon! Thanks for watching this video! Click the button right in the middle of the screen to subscribe. Or you can watch these two videos. See you there! Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In this lesson, we're going to learn how our basic number system works, and we're going to learn about an important concept called place value. The number system that we use in math is called base 10, because it uses 10 different symbols for counting. Math could use other systems that are based on a different number, like base 2 or base 8, but I'll give you 10 guesses as to why the number 10 is such a popular choice. The 10 symbols that we use are called digits, and they look like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. At first glance, you might think that that's only 9 digits, but remember, the 0 counts as one of the digits also. To see how our number system uses these digits to represent amounts, let's pretend that we have an apple orchard full of apple trees, and each of these trees is loaded with big, juicy red apples that we need to pick and then count for our records. We're going to use something called a number place to count. The best way to understand a number place is to imagine that it's like a small box that's only big enough to hold one digit at a time. As we count, we'll change the digit that's in the number place to match how many apples we've picked. For example, if we start with no apples at all, we put the digit zero in the number place, because zero means none. But then, as the apples start coming in from the orchard, we begin to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, now we've got nine apples, but we've also got a problem. We've already run out of digits to count with. The highest digit we have is a nine, but there's a lot more apples left to count. What will we do? The solution is to use groups to help us count. If we pick just one more apple, we'll have 10, right? So let's combine those 10 apples into a single group. So how many apples do we have? 10, but, how many groups of 10 apples do we have? Ah, just one. Does that help us with our lack of digits problem? It sure does, if we use another number place. Instead of using this new number place to count up individual apples one at a time, like we did with the first number place, we're going to use it to count apples 10 at a time. In other words, we'll use it to keep track of how many groups of 10 apples that we've picked. For example, if we've picked only one group of 10, then we'll put the digit one in that number place. If we pick two groups of 10, then we'll put the digit two in that number place. And if we pick three groups of 10, then we'll put the digit three in that number place, and so on. Do you see what's happening? Because the new number place is being used to count groups of 10, it's allowing us to reuse our original 10 digits. But this time, they're able to count, or represent, bigger amounts. Since this new number place is for counting groups of 10, we're going to name it the tens place. And we'll name our original number place the ones place, because we used it to count things one at a time. And here's the really important thing. We're not going to use the new number place instead of the old one. We're going to use it alongside of the old one, so that we have one number place for counting by ones, and another number place for counting by tens. Using these two number places together lets us represent amounts that are in between the groups of 10. For example, if we've already picked 30 apples, then there'll be a three in the tens place because we have three groups of 10. But there'll be a zero in the ones place because there are no individual apples left over. 
But if we've picked 32 apples, then there will be a three in the tens place and a two in the ones place to represent the two individual apples that are not in the groups of 10. In fact, using only our 10 digits and these two number places, we can count all the way from zero up to 99. At 99, both of our number places are maxed out with the highest digits, and we won't be able to count any higher unless we get another number place. If we've picked 99 apples, and then we pick just one more, we'll have exactly 100 apples. And if we make a group from those 100 apples, we can use this new number place to count how many groups of 100 we've picked. That means that we can reuse the same 10 digits again in this new number place to count how many groups of 100 we have. And you guessed it, it's called the hundreds place because we use it to count groups of 100. Are you starting to see how our base 10 number system works? It uses different number places to represent the different sized groups that we use to count. And the digits in those number places tell us how many of each group we have. The digit in the ones place tells us how many ones we have. The digit in the tens place tells us how many groups of 10 we have. And the digit in the hundreds place tells us how many groups of 100 we have. And have you noticed that each time we got a new number place to count larger groups, we placed it to the left of the previous number place. That's important because number places are always arranged in the exact same order. Starting with the ones place, as you move to the left, the number places represent larger and larger amounts. And did you also notice that each new number place represents groups that are exactly 10 times bigger than the previous number place? 10 is 10 times bigger than one, and 100 is 10 times bigger than 10. That's really important because it helps us see the pattern for even bigger number places. It helps us to see that the next number place will count groups of 10 times 100, which is 1,000. And that's why it's called the thousands place. And the next number place will count groups 10 times bigger than that. It's the 10 thousands place. And the number places keep on going like that. Next is the 100 thousands place. Then the millions place. Then 10 millions. Then 100 millions. Then billions. And so on. Oh, and you may notice that when we get a lot of number places next to each other like this, it's a little hard to quickly recognize which place is which. That's why many countries use some kind of separator every three places to make them easier to keep track of. For example, in the US, we use a comma every three number places to make it easier to identify things like the thousands place or the millions place. Seeing all these number places together helps you understand what we mean by place value. In a multi-digit number, the number place that a digit is in determines its value. Even though we only have 10 digits, each digit can stand for different amounts depending on the place that it occupies. If the digit five is in the ones place, it just means five. But if a five is in the tens place, then it means 50. And if a five is in the hundreds place, it means 500. And it's the same for bigger number places. A five in the hundred thousands place means 500,000. And a five in the billions place means five billion. See how a digit's place affects its value? Of course, when we work with numbers in math, most of the time the number places are invisible, but the underlying pattern is always the same. Oh, and because the number places are invisible, in certain cases you'll need to use zeros to make it clear what number you're talking about. To see what I mean, imagine that this five is in the hundreds place to represent 500, but if you make the number places invisible, then it just looks like five and not 500. So, to make sure people know you mean 500, you need a five in the hundreds place, a zero in the tens place, and a zero in the ones place. Now you can tell that the five is in the hundreds place and it means 500. Okay, now a great way to see place value in action with some actual numbers is to expand them to show that they're really combinations of different groups. When we do this, it's called writing a number in expanded form. For example, we can expand 324 to be 300, 20, and four, because the three is in the hundreds place and means 300, the two is in the tens place and means 20, and the four is in the ones place, so it just means four. So 324 in expanded form is the combination of those amounts, 300 plus 20 plus four. Let's try writing another number in expanded form, 6,715. We can expand this into 6,000 because the six is in the thousands place plus 700 because the seven is in the hundreds place, plus 10 because the one is in the tens place, and five because the five is in the ones place. So the expanded form is 6,000 
plus 700, plus 10, plus 5. All right, so do you see how our base 10 number system works? Number places are used to count different sized groups. Each group is 10 times bigger than the next, and the digits in the number places tell us how many of each group we have. The tricky part is that the number places are invisible, so you have to know how they work behind the scenes in order to make sense of multi-digit numbers. How do you like them apples? The exercises for this section will help you practice so that you get used to how place value works, which is super important if you want to be successful in math. As always, thanks for watching Math Antics, and I'll see you next time. That gives me an idea. I could make pies out of these. Learn more at mathantics.com. So, class, I am giving you an overview of that chapter. First of all, the chapter is number up to 10,000. First of all, we are starting it from the counting till 10,000. You have to learn inverse counting by your heart. The second topic is international number system how we give the number name and all that. After that, there is place value. Every number has its own value and every digit it has own specification. After that, we are studying about the place value description. Then we are making the difference between the place value and the face value. After that, the last but not the least topic is number pattern. How we rectify or how we recognize the pattern of a series. After that, I attach some videos which help you further for this. In the last slide, I am providing you some links related to the topics and it's my recommendation, highly recommended that you have to go for these videos and should understand it because it's really helpful for you all to understand the topic. Hope you enjoy the video. We will soon engage with the next video related to that chapter. Till then, take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.